dogs. So I'd come up to my little patch of Cape York with me mate Daryl from down south. Well, Daryl grew up around here and hunted the place for years. He hasn't been back for a long time. So we took the opportunity to get stuck into some of what Cape York has to offer. And while the fishing was far from red hot, I yes. managed to convince the village idiot to climb onto me lure and had a little Not bit of fun fish. for the evening. But pretty happy to have uh, fooled a barra finally. And the world's smallest barramundi. Hey little fella, how are you going? You are tiny. Hopefully you get out of the way of the crocs. Next morning of course we're out hunting. The dogs were keen as mustard. So we got plenty of keen jumps and there was obviously no shortage of scent around but the dogs couldn't convert that into pork. And eventually we pulled up at our first destination where I was planning to send Daryl for a walk into a swamp where hopefully he might be able to sneak up on a pig with his rifle. So I don't think I'd make a very good hunting guide. As I was drawing Daryl a map telling him where he could expect to find pigs and how to get around the countryside, the dogs took matters into their own hands. It's just the dogs don't get on, buddy. Catch one on the swamp for us right now. Just, yeah, yeah. The dogs have actually taken off down there. Where'd they go? Gone down to the swamp, the pricks. 300 metres away. Oh, I might have to put you somewhere else. <laughs> it's amazing how often that happens. The dogs will be milling around and then they get bored. Yeah. There we go. Dogs are on. There's that. The dogs had pulled this pig up a fair old distance away from where they hit it, so I was desperately trying to get there as quickly as I could since I was running borrowed the holder with this pack. And when you're running holders, every second counts. Good size. Not oh, huge, but a good pig. Get a hold of him. Dogs! Very good. Got a copy there, Daryl. Oh, beautiful, yeah. I'm uh, going to take the dogs just quickly down to the river for a drink, but yeah, I'll uh, give you a cooey when I'm uh, back. It's a um, good boar, bloody good boar. We got one pig. There's the mark of the one that obviously ran away from the scrap. Well, it's a good thing I'm not getting paid as a hunting guide <laughs> because I was just explaining the lay of the land to Daryl here behind the camera. And I was going to send him into a really productive swamp that nearly always produces a boar. And uh, lo and behold, the dogs picked up a scent, I suppose quite predictably in the end. And uh, took off and hit this guy about 350 metres away, I guess. And pulled him up after about 100 metres, just in some thick, shitty sickle pod. Very, very close to the main river. And I got here and uh, Bory had obviously been holding for a little while. And... Uh, he was getting a bit tired and the bailers were taking over as holders really. Uh, the boar tried to break a couple of times when I got there uh, and I thought at one point he was going to come at me. It was a pretty tight tunnel through the super body weeds but the bailers got on his arse end and turned it nicely. So uh, that was a, a nice handy pig this one. We took the dogs down for a drink just down the river afterwards and there was a, another, another fresh set of tracks from a good boar just heading straight across the river and Mia followed it up for about 250 metres but in the end thankfully <laughs> she uh, she gave up because I didn't really feel like giving the dogs another run in, uh, at this time of the morning. Yeah, I'll borrow the holders getting a bit warm and uh, yeah there's no way he's going to be denied another pig <laughs> if they find one but uh, yeah no that's a, that's a good bloody good pig that one. Um, yeah one for the dogs, uh, zero for the rifle so far but Hopefully we'll change that. I'll send uh, send Daryl up the river, I think, in a little bit, and see if he can't ninja onto a, a good pig. So, good stuff, good dogs. So yeah, after a bit of work um, on pigs, the old knives get pretty blunt pretty quickly. 
So uh, rather than carry a, a steel on me, which is just another bit of gear to carry, uh, yeah, I steal it on my pig sticker. It's got that nice little ridge down the middle of it. It's nice, smooth steel. And it just acts like a polishing steel, and it does a really good job. And brings up, just uh, realigns the edge on your knives. Gives you a little bit of a little bit of extra cutting power before you need to stone it again. So you can do this on a rifle barrel as well if you don't if you have no regard for your bluing. <laughs> when you top edge edge of your window, your car window. Top edge of your car window. Best yeah, thing ever. excellent. That's another good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything with a fine grain that's harder than the steel will do the trick. So, that should do the trick now. Beauty. And um, so I'll just pointed out this dig in here, the base of this little shrub. You can see this quite a bit at the base of these little fellas. This is a, a species of, of Currajong, brachychiton. And uh, it's obviously got a fair bit of uh, food going here because the pigs are constantly digging up the roots and chewing them up. And uh, I had been reading a little bit about some of the bush foods um, the Aborigines used back in the day and uh, this was one of them so I've read the uh, roots are supposed to be quite starchy and pretty decent roasting so one day I'll get around to digging some up myself and having a taste yeah roast them up with some wild pork Would it beat the pigs to it <laughs> yeah, they oh, that's fine. always a good feeling when you get these buggers back to the vehicle we're gonna call it a morning and head back to camp and get a big feed of bacon and eggs Probably not from this bloke. <laughs> it's always a good day when I can find some wildlife to harass too. So stopping at a dam on the way back to camp, we found this little bloke. This little fella here is a lesser black whip snake, Demancia vestigiata, and they're listed as potentially dangerous, being in the same family as browns and taipans. But this bloke, he just wanted to get away. This is a, a green ant nest that's fallen, and you can see this little tiny jumping spider on here. Hopefully, you can see it. It's a bit hard to get stuff this close up on the GoPro, but normally any creature in a green ant nest is, is uh, gone, there's toast, they just smash them. Here's this little fella. These little guys have adapted to uh, live within the green ant colony by chemical mimicry. So this little spider actually puts out uh, scents, pheromones, that make him smell like a green ant to the other green ants, or to the green ants, and just lets him get around safely. It's amazing, isn't it? Nature and that, is an awesome thing. It is. And that allows them to both uh, benefit from the protection of the ant colony, and I'm fairly sure they also predate the, the um, larvae of the ants. So what's the membrane made of? I'm not entirely sure. It's a uh, silk that the the larvae produce. So I guess it's probably something similar to silkworms. That's my guess. But I'm not entirely sure. But I know that they uh, they use the they use the larvae like a little needle and uh, stitch it. Yeah, stitch the leaves together. Just I mean, by the secretion. Beautifully they're laid out, you know. Yeah, they're real bloody real engineers. These buggers. Oh. They weren't so bloody anti-social I'd have a lot more time for them. Wildlife watching aside we were here to hunt pigs so the next morning we headed out to another productive swamp on you and I was hoping to get Daryl onto a pig that he could shoot so I sent him one way around the swamp while I went around the other way with the dogs and I did it to him again the poor bloke. And we're on A little bacon seedling. Off you go, mate. Ooh. 
There's the usual chaos when the dogs hit a mob, Borry catching his own pig, and the other dogs catching theirs. And while there were no trophy boars, it's still valuable pest control. You can see what this uh, little mob was doing out here. Just uh, rooting the shit out of the edge of the swamp here. And this is really bad news for these wetlands. There's a lot of the stuff like the these grasses and lilies that normally, if they weren't destroyed by pigs, would uh, have their roots still in the mud and hold on to the hold on to all the sediment, which means that the waterways are clear and healthy and fresh um, all the way and as as they shrink into the dry season and then when the wet season comes they yeah healthy again and everything's ready to ready to go but the pigs come through as the water shrink and they dig it all up like this they eat all the water lily bulbs yeah, not, um, a lily. not a water, water lily to be seen in here this swamp in this area should be basically covered in water lilies but it's not and you'll see that all around Cape York. The only place there's water lilies left is where there's permanent water all year round because the pigs can't get so far out into it. But around these ephemeral or seasonal swamps, yeah, a lot of the vegetation that should be here hasn't got a hope. So that's one of the reasons we hunt these things. Try and just take the pressure off the environment a little bit. Well, we're just sitting here by the creek contemplating life, the universe and everything. And look down the track and the mongrel dogs 250 metres away. So if I'm really, really lucky, they'll lose it. Because <laughs> I really can't be stuffed going after another pig right now. Not enough drive, eh? Oh, Jesus. I'm happy that uh, these guys are... A little bit less aggro and active this time of year. This one of the dogs pretty much stood on him. No one wants to get bitten by that. Anyway, after dispatching a couple more mob pigs, we finally headed for home and breakfast. Eventually it was time to leave though, but on the way out, I decided to throw the camera on Daryl and send him for a stalk up a little creek line to see if we could get him a pig. Pretty hard to move through this stuff quietly. I'll we'll just pop up in this ridge here and have a look from the top, get a bit of height on them. Dry down there. I'll have a little bit of a sneak down into the creek and see what we can see. Is that smart little buggers? See the wallabies have dug a hole digging for water. You can see the water down the bottom there. The wallaby's tail. They know it's there. It's a perfect little spot to drink. It's not near a decent sized water hole where they're gonna get eaten by a crocodile. Nature rocks. It's nothing but wallaby prints so far. They've got a log jam in the river. If you have a look under there, it's a perfect place for them to have a snooze in the heat of the day. And look at that, looks like a good place to have a nap for me. The wind swung this way now. Pain on the bum. For all you 4X drinkers, we're in the middle of nowhere. Pick up your freaking rubbish. I'll get that on the way back. I always check these little spots because they come off the main creek and they'll just lie down anywhere that I can get a deep shady bit. You can see the dry patch of sand. A bit of a pad. This is like the best type of creek to stalk down. You can be pretty quiet. Just hopefully we come and fill the water. It's big, but it's very old. Yeah, it's a bit of standing water. Manky water right there. Sand filtered crystal clear water right there. Nature's not stupid. 
Tell me what made that track. There's that for a little private spa bath in here. The water runs down up just a drainage that runs into the main creek. But this is some primo looking country. Look at the pig digging along here. swelling around behind me so pretty pointless it is what it is nice day for a walk in the bush and you get some see some cool stuff and well the camera's still running Stu thanks heaps mate you don't have any clue how much I've enjoyed this it's been amazing I mean I can't thank you enough and uh, maybe we'll do it again one day anyway champ thanks heaps